One of the best ways to be seen as an expert in your niche or your field, to increase your email list and to expand your reach and influence is to put together and host a virtual summit. And if you're not familiar with a, with a virtual summit is, it's basically taking what you would normally experience going to an in-person conference or summit where there's speakers that come in, they have sessions, they have different topics that they're talking about. There might be an MC host there introducing them to bring them in. There might be multiple rooms at the conference with multiple speakers going on at the same time. I actually just went to a conference like this, the Traffic and Conversion. I'm describing it, the Traffic and Conversion Summit. I just went to that a couple months ago and it was massive. There's like 171 sessions, all kinds of speakers from all over the place. Well, a virtual summit is taking that experience and bringing it to a virtual world. And we're gonna look at a tool that allows you to do that in this video called Hello Summit. And to visit their website, you can go to wpcrafter.com slash Hello Summit. Here's a summit right here that the actual makers of Hello Summit put together. And just to give you an idea, so you go here, you can see the sponsors just like you would in a normal in-person summit. Uh, here's featured talks and speakers. They have their subjects. I can click on any of these to see information about their session. Uh, here's a visual representation of the speakers and the different topics that they're gonna be covering, the amount of experts, all this stuff right here. Here's the sponsors. And this platform is going to allow you to essentially pull this off. So essentially what we're talking about in a virtual summit is replicating a real world experience virtually. And I've seen a few people pull this off with amazing success. And as I was thinking about this tool in this video, I was wondering if people would really see it as something that makes sense. And so, you know, I'll give you an example. About four months ago, five months ago in December, I started going to this place called Orange Theory Fitness. Uh, it's one of the most popular, fastest growing uh, fitness franchises in the world. It's huge. It's basically like a group class and I pay, was paying $180 a month to, get, uh, to go to unlimited classes. I was going about four times per week and it was great. I would go there. There'd be all these other participants. The workout would be different. There's a coach there trying to correct your form, uh, push you, motivate you along the way. Now, the only negative with this is I would have to hop, I would have to leave my house 15 minutes before class and get ready and everything. Then I'd have to drive over there. There's that 15 minutes. And then I would go to my workout and be fantastic. But then I would drive home, there's another 15 minutes. So to go to a one hour class, I would pretty much lose and it, or I would spend an extra 30 minutes just to go to that hour class. Multiply that by four times a week, I was spending two hours just driving back and forth here. And it's fine, I really enjoyed it. But about a month ago, I thought, you know what? Let me see if I could replicate this experience without the drive. And so I found this app on my for my iPhone called Gixo. And Gixo is, it wasn't a money issue, it was a time issue. So with the Gixo app, I can pull it up and I can uh, find uh, the workout that I'm interested in. They have live workouts with a coach. I can enable the camera. So if I wanted to allow them to see me, to fix any form, they could see if I'm struggling, to encourage me along the way. Basically what Gixo did is they took this real world experience of going to this gym and they replicated it so people can have it at home and they don't have to drive to the gym or back. It ends up also being a lot less expensive, but I don't really care about the money. It was more all the time that was wasted. And so now with this, I find myself working out instead of four times a week because of the convenience factor, five or six times per week because I can uh, Apple play it to my my television, I can have my, my earbuds on, I can listen to what they're saying, and if I wanted that additional coaching, I can just turn on the camera, they could see me and talk to me, and I can talk back with them. 
that is an example of why I think virtual summits are pretty darn awesome. To go to the Trafficking Inversion Summit, I had to drive there, but most people were flying there, many from other countries, getting the hotel, uh, all of the expenses involved. It becomes not as much expensive, but, but the time. So stinking time consuming. That's why this concept of a virtual summit it, I, I would almost prefer going to a virtual summit than some of the summits that or the conferences that go on. So let's take a look at Hello Summit. Visit wpcrafter.com slash Hello Summit to come over to here. However, for the next two weeks, that link's actually going to take you right here because it's an AppSumo deal that's going on right now. There's a bunch of moving parts with it. I'm going to do my best to explain it and the pros and cons uh, that I've come across using it. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what this deal gets you. It's a lifetime license. It's $59 and you can do what's called stacking. That means you're paying that multiple times to uh, get more capabilities out of it. So let's uh, scroll down and take a look at what you get here. Now I'm going to just say what it is and explain it in a moment. So I'll tell you what I bought. I did a double stack, so I paid $118, and this gets me 5,000 attendees. I'm gonna explain that, hosts, active events, and all that, but it also removes the Hey Summit branding. So all of these plans give you the option of hosting it on your own URL, but because I double stacked, I can also remove the branding for this company. You can stack it up to five codes if you want. It's just going to start expanding and doubling your attend your limits of the attendees, the hosts, and the active events, and all that kind of stuff. So this is the AppSumo deal going on right now. Um, I think uh, the TLDR, that means you don't have enough time to watch the rest of this video. I'm just gonna break it on down for you right now. At these lifetime prices, it's worth jumping in if you see yourself wanting to have a virtual summit. Okay, now if what I don't think you should do, uh, get this is if you don't see yourself doing a virtual summit, and you're trying to say, hmm, I can use this platform for this other purpose. Because right now it's kind of a rigid platform and I'm gonna explain that later in this video uh, to try to identify some of the pros and cons with it. So it's pretty interesting. That's just the TLDR right there. Okay, let's take a look at the website here and talk about how this works. So essentially what Hello Summit does is it gives you all the tools to replicate that in-person experience that someone would have at a summit but it's gonna be a virtual summit. So the way it would work, if you were organizing one of these, you would go out there and you would identify who you would want to be speakers. So what you would do is you would reach out and I'll tell you, a lot of people are willing to be speakers because everybody's just trying to grow their uh, influence on the internet and to be perceived as an expert. You're gonna get lots of yeses. It's gonna be a lot easier than you think. And what the way it works is, you go to someone, they agree, and what you wanna do really is encourage them to share the summit with their audiences. So what you do is say you get 20 people that are gonna participate as speakers, and then they're sharing it all with their audiences and they're bringing all that traffic to you. So that's kind of the overall concept. Now what's nice about this is it provides all of this structure, every T is crossed, every I is dotted, they provide all the structure for this. You add a speaker, well the speaker gets a login, they can log in and add all of their bio information, information about their talk. And there's a way, if you're selling access to your summit, which I think you should because the value, um, is, is the perceived value is pretty low when it's free, in my opinion, there should be a cost and you can sell it through this uh, platform. You There's an affiliate program too, so you can make your speakers affiliates. So if you charge 50 bucks or 100 bucks to attend the summit, you can get 50% to each speaker. There's gonna be something in it for them. They have an incentive to share it with their audience. Now, when the time comes to actually have the live summit, you're going to need to bring your own live video feed or software. So what you'd probably wanna do is use Zoom. It's gonna be the easiest 
go get a Zoom account for a month and do all of these different uh, interviews or whatever, however you're structuring it to have these sessions go on. And what's really cool is there's also something called hosts. So when I went to the Traffic and Conversion Summit, each of the rooms that had sessions had different hosts. So you can load in different hosts that will introduce the different speakers and if it's interview style to conduct that particular interview. So let's just scan the homepage. We'll take a look at the pricing. We'll go into the pros and cons and we'll take a look at what the platform does. Um, but it's pretty sweet. If you might be thinking, well, if I'm bringing my own Zoom to have the interview, why don't I just do this on my website? There's so many moving parts with this. If you genuinely wanted to have a virtual summit, it, you're going to be way better off. It's going to, you're going to pull it off a lot better having a system that was designed for it. So, uh, this system here, like for example, when your attendee registers, there could be an onboarding process, asking them their interests and making uh, session suggestions to them. The speaker onboarding and speaker management is pretty amazing. So your speakers will have their own logins to manage everything that their participation. You just, you can't build this yourself. You can't stitch this together yourself. Um, there's engagement options here with asking questions. You can get comments. There's analytic tools. There's viral giveaways. So you can ask your attendees to share it for some kind of viral giveaway. And there's also giveaways that you have at those conferences. You can facilitate just uh, product giveaways in the tool pretty interesting. So we have comments and all of that. And so let's take a quick look at their pricing and then I'll break down or try to explain what some of the limits are on the various plans. So here are the plans right here. Let's just look at the middle plan for say, for example, there's five hosts. So a host is someone that would be conducting the interview. So if you had a big virtual summit going on where there's multiple concurrent sessions, then you need these multiple hosts. Um, so that would be a use of most multiple hosts. I don't think most virtual summits would have that, but the real massive ones, they definitely would. Here is the next limit is the amount of attendees. So this plan right here is 7.5,000, 7,500 attendees, people that have registered to go to the event. Then there's another limitation here of the active events that can be in the platform. So you can have multiple events and you can make them a kind of a live event initially and switch it to be evergreen. So that means after the event, you can still sell access. It still provides the structure for it all in there. Uh, now there's a transaction fee. This tool allows you to sell access and they do it through their Stripe account. So you pay the Stripe fees, which is 2.9%. And then they tack on a 1.5% transaction fee on top of it. Now, one of the benefits is down here is there's an affiliate platform that's integrated. So when you process the transactions through them, you get access to this affiliate system, which is really smart if you're going to sell access to this to let the speakers promote it to their audience and actually make something from it. And then there's additional administrative users right here. So those are what some of these numbers are, your hosts, your active events, and your attendees to the particular event. That's what those are. Uh, so you get to also have a custom domain. So you actually can choose a subdomain, whatever dot hello summit dot com if you wanted, or you can do what I would suggest and just connect it into your own domain or your own subdomain. You get some customization options like your logo and uh, there's like a builder for the landing page there. You can make your summit be evergreen so people can continue to register for it. And of course you get this affiliate management platform. Uh, now they also have an enterprise plan and this is, um, you can get away and use your own Stripe account on that enterprise plan right here. And then if you paid yearly, you can uh, save some money there. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the pros and the cons. And then I'm going to go ahead and log into the back end of it. So let's take, let's take a look at some of the pros. Let's start there. Maybe you should go cons and then pros. Okay. Um, one of the pros is it's a complete solution. I was just explaining. You got affiliate management, payment processing, user engagement. It'll send emails to your attendees. There's the login for your speakers. It's pretty comprehensive. Um, and it's going to present you as a 
as the expert, right? You want to come across as professional, but it's not just professional uh, to the attendees. It's the speakers and the attendees. You're going to be providing the best experience possible for them. Uh, you get to sell access and they make it real easy to sell access to the summit and they have that integrated affiliate program. It's it's all just a complete solution and you can be confident that they've thought of most things. Okay, but every system has some cons along with it and so some of the cons that I have seen so far and you know, they could iron these out later if you're watching this video later. I find it kind of a rigid system. It does what it does. So uh, some people might look at this and say, oh, maybe I can use that to host an online course. No, <laughs> you can't. It's for a virtual summit. Uh, I wouldn't try to make it serve a purpose other than that. It lacks external integrations. So, uh, I did say it's a complete solution, but there are some parts to it that are unattractive and it does lack external integrations. For example, uh, Zapier doesn't have Zapier integration. So for me, I would prefer to not sell it through their affiliate program or through their checkout system. And it doesn't have anything to do with that 1.5%. It's just that I rather sell this in a sales funnel and maybe have it be along with a physical or a, a software product that I'm selling uh, that will maybe as a bonus, you get access, free access to a summit. Uh, that's how I would like to sell it, but you can't do that. So if they add Zapier integration, then I can sell it via the sales funnel, Zapier it all, zap it in, zap the registration in from the buyer over there, and then they'll just be automatically registered to that. I want that. Uh, another thing is there isn't Zapier on the way out. So say you do use its checkout system, how are you gonna get those attendees and their information out of there? You, you're, there's no Zapier integration, there's no automation with it. So uh, it's limited in that regard, lacking these external integrations that I think it really needs. And I would prefer to sell it externally on my own website with my own sales funnels and with my own existing affiliates. Um, you need external video services. So to have the live event, you need a Zoom account or you need a big marker account. Those are the only two integrations that it has. Now I understand why they're trying to do what they do well and not try to do every single thing. And Zoom is a great and easy to use solution, but I would like to connect in my live streaming software to it. I have a, a professional live streaming setup where I can do amazing things like you're seeing in this video uh, but you can't do that because you can only connect zoom and big marker today uh, so they should expand that but then also on the flip side if you're doing that evergreen summit you can you you basically are loading in your video a link to your video file and it can be on YouTube which you're not going to want because it'll have the YouTube branding so you can do that but I wouldn't suggest it Vimeo but then you're going to also need a Vimeo account to remove its branding at an additional cost per year and then there is Wistia and Wistia is quite expensive so you're kind of limited on the ways of having it be evergreen with those so I would anticipate them expanding that but video hosting is a expensive proposition ultimately I think for it to be a complete solution they do need to do their own video hosting where you can upload it they'll encode it store it and deliver that I think that's what it needs uh, but that's not what you're getting today uh, and then the plan limitations. So the way it works is those plans had multiple events. So if you had multiple events, so you had three different summits, well, the subscribers is the total subscribers. So if you have one summit with 5,000 attendees, another one with 3,000 attendees, and another one with 1,000 attendees, you need a plan that allows you 9,000 attendees, where I think the limitation should be just per live summit or not have a limitation of attendees per live summit because the solution can get quite expensive when you're using, if you wanted to have an evergreen summit. So you're gonna find yourself having to archive your summits in order to reclaim those 
concurrent subscribers uh, and so you can have another live summit. So the solution can get expensive if you're paying monthly and you wanna go evergreen and yet you're up against some of these limitations. Now obviously, if you have, uh, if you're a marketing powerhouse and you have a massive audience and people are constantly buying access to your summit, I think in that case, it's all right because you're gonna make that money right back but there should be a different way of counting subscribers. So if I sold it today, if someone paid me $100, but they log in, they consume it for a weekend, and then they never log in again, they are sitting there taking up a subscriber even though they're not using the system. So I find that to be one of the limitations. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on into the app uh, itself. So, uh, okay, here we go. I'm actually logged in. It has a beautiful, interface they have the user interface nailed down so uh, you, this is the account that I set up recently and I've already actually added an event if I wanted to create a new event I would go to my user dashboard and you see I've created this event here and I would go here and create a new event it's actually pretty simple to get started now there's a lot of settings obviously so I'd pop in my title, company name, and a tagline, and then a logo. The logo is going to show on the landing page for the event. And then right here, I would check this if it's going to be an evergreen summit or not. Now, I've already gone ahead and created one, and that's what we're seeing here. I'm actually logged in to this particular event. So you can see the URL. I got to set this part. It says sales funnels dot hey summit dot com uh, so this is my event and it's on this subdomain right here so when I go to the dashboard of this event this is what it looks like it's going to show me the breakdown of attendees social shares all kinds of I mean they've thought of everything I really got to hand them feedback I had to hand them credit that the activity and reporting dashboards they're beautiful they're detailed and uh, I just, it's very impressive. So we can see a list of feedback right here that questions, uh, attendees, giveaway winners, our top speakers, our webinar reports, it's all listed right there. So I'm gonna jump into the event setup right here and take a look at the settings. So after you create your event, you don't have to worry about it. You can change anything that you entered. So when you go to your event settings right here, uh, you can choose, you can basically pull up that same setting screen right here and switch it to a evergreen or a live or from live to evergreen and you can archive it right here uh, and then uh, right here you choose your localization by default it's going to localize in the UK uh, cho choose your date format and all that kind of stuff pop in your branding so here's the branding options you want to pop in your logo the light version the dark version of it you're going to want that because there's times where your logo is gonna be put on a dark background, so it needs to be a light version. Info right here, you can put a favicon um, and some social stuff as well. Uh, terms and conditions, it's all right here. And here is where you actually would uncheck the branding. So uh, here, let me turn it on so you can see where that branding is, but this is where you would uncheck that branding. Let's go ahead and save it. Now here's where you would choose the subdomain or you would link it up to your own domain right here. So here's some instructions on how to link it up to your own domain. And I chose this. It's gonna by default take the name of the event and make it the slug, but I came in here and modified it to make it shorter. You're probably definitely gonna wanna use this on your own domain name though when you go live. Check out these really cool integrations. So you can integrate a help desk. So if I click on add, let's take a look at the integrations. So you got your big ones, Intercom and Drift, uh, and then you got your smaller ones, Zendesk, Help Scout, Live Agent, and Convert Fox, which is actually just and so you can go ahead and integrate any of those in there. I think that's really cool. And then there's a promo banner. I haven't dug into exactly what that is, but these are your event settings. So you control your footer links, your categories. Um, I didn't do any categories. That would be uh, one of your big events where there's a blogging category and then there's a live streaming category and all these different breakdowns. Uh, email templates, you know what? 
they have really well written email templates. Uh, so I put myself in as a speaker, I got the email and it was written really well, like very friendly, how you would want your um, emails written. So you can go in here and tweak these email templates yourself. Here's where you're gonna load in offers and giveaways, viral incentives, it's all in here. And really the first thing you do when you come in is you add a host and then you have to connect that host to the Zoom or to Big Marker. So when you add a host, you click add host, it's gonna ask you to put the host information, name and all that. But then after you do that, let me add a new host so you can see what it looks like because this is where you're gonna plug it in to the live video feeds. Okay, so I've added my host, I'll click on save. You can see it here and then we get this option to connect this into the uh, the service Zoom or Big Marker at the time. So you click this and you can use either of these and connect it in. Uh, so that, and you can also add pixel tracking for everything. So they've really thought about everything. Uh, this is one area where I wish there was more options for integrating video services, but I understand Zoom is so easy to use. Uh, I'm high tech and they're adding solutions in here for anyone to use and Zoom is just drop dead easy to use. Okay, so you first would add your host and then you wanna go in here and add your speakers. I added me as a speaker right here and I actually don't know what this VIP stuff is but let me show you uh, right here is the option to send login details to the speaker and, and that's really awesome to, to have a, a dedicated login for your speakers. There's a speaker dashboard and they can go in here and you can give them permissions to do different things, uh, set up the information for their session. Uh, it's, it's really cool. So you load in your speakers and then you would create a talk. So here's a talk I created for the speaker and I put a time in right here. Uh, let me show you when I go to edit the record, you can see right here, this is the name of the session. I can choose my speaker. I can also link them up with a host. And there's just some settings here for categories, active, featured, all kinds of stuff like this. Um, so this is where you would list out all of the various talks. And then you can add brands, sell branding, advertising throughout the system. Here, I'm gonna go through this a little faster. We got engagement tools, our revenue tools right here. You can have coupons, you can see uh, information on payments, you can set up your affiliate program right here. You can set your affiliate commissions, having a sign up form and all of that. It's really cool the way that this is all set up. We just have a few more tabs. We have hosting here so you can set up schedules, scripts, you can have your sponsors in here to sell out sponsors. It's really cool. Uh, and then right here for promotion, Promoting it, you can load your assets, banners, swipe copies, testimonials, it's all pretty awesome. So let me click on view event. I didn't spend too much time with this, so don't judge my copywriting skills. Um, so I loaded in my logo, you can see that right here. And just note there's this option here on the bottom left that says edit page. When I click on that, you'll see that page, the, the page builder type experience for it. So it creates all of these tabs right here. Let me jump out. Uh, where we have uh, uh, replays up next, speakers. I mean, it's organized so well. Uh, let's do, here, let me just scroll down and you can see I only have the one session in here and the one speaker. So it looks a little bit more bare uh, than you saw when I showed you the live one. I'll click on edit page and you can see it's actually very easy. So when I hover over these areas with text, I can just click into it and start typing. It's all what you see is what you get. And there's some minor settings that are available when you click the setting option here. If you want to stylize it a little bit more to your brand and you can actually add sections in between by clicking this little plus. Uh, right there's your option. So it's got a really interesting page building experience. I like what they've done. It's basic, uh, but it's not bad at all. Uh, so you can start editing away at this and then click on preview page and you have kind of your landing registration page. 
Let me show you what it looks like when we are inside of one of the sessions. So there's this uh, three dots here on the top right and I can go back to my dashboard and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. I'm going to click on content. I'm gonna click on talks, there's my talk, and I'll click right here where it says preview page. It's gonna open up in a new tab. It gives me the warning here that I'm previewing it, which is good. Uh, so we have the info here that all comes off of the session info that I put in. Uh, and then we have this here. I'm gonna just enter an email so that I can show you what it looks like with a YouTube video in evergreen mode. Okay, and here is what it is. I've been making videos regarding sales funnels here recently, and so I I was going to put the different videos in the series in as sessions. So here's the YouTube video, and this is what it looks like when someone's in there. Obviously, I have it light on the information. Uh, people can comment. There's these like really cool uh, engagement pop-ups here on the bottom right. Just these little touches like this make you really feel like they've they've really thought of everything with it. Um, so, but like I said, for, you have to do all those video hostings, right? So if I wanted to do an, it after the fact, uh, good, it's on mute. Uh, you can see I've got all this YouTube branding, so I wouldn't want to put this as a YouTube video after the fact. If I wanted this to be evergreen, I'd need to buy Vimeo and use Vimeo or Wistia. And I wouldn't use Wistia because it's quite expensive. Um, so anyways, this is... Hey Summit, I think it's very interesting. And if you are someone that plans or wants to have a virtual summit, that this is a really interesting tool to pull that off. After looking at this, I can 100% say without a doubt, if I was doing a virtual summit, I would use this tool. I would not try to do it on my own. Obviously, I know how to make a website. I know how to make individual pages. I know how to have registration areas. I know how to live stream. I know how to broadcast video after the fact. I already know all that stuff, and there's no way I would try to do it on my own because there'd be so many pieces that I couldn't pull off. The speaker login area, all the registrations, the social sharing, the viral giveaways, and all all of that so it's a really good tool for but take into consideration those pros and cons that I listed out if you want to have virtual summits it's great there's a lot of course creators on this webs on this channel and so this might be really what you need to get that exposure that you're trying to get to your courses that you might be selling so anyways that's all that i have for you in this video if you have any questions you can ask down below remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and click on that notification bell if you're not subscribed and you don't have notifications turned on yet like to hear what you think in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.